In this video, I will show you how to take an image that you've created as vector artwork in Illustrator and convert it to a raster image, such as a JPEG image. Um, there, first of all, there's only three main steps to this, but they each take a little bit of time and a little bit of understanding. But essentially, the first thing that you do is you go into Illustrator, you make the artboard and the artwork the size that you need the final image to be. Then you go through the steps of exporting and then you test it in Photoshop. First, let's start with why we're doing this to the specific sizes that I give you. When you set up a website, you're going to be faced with the same issue I am, and that is how do you show your work in a consistent fashion in here. So when the user decides to go through a gallery of work, they're going to see the image at the maximum size available. And if it's a poster, a poster shown in the format, the tall format like this, portrait style, it's not going to be very big because the web is, on our current screens except for phones, is more this way, left to right. Now let me just go through a couple images so you can see there's typical poster but then every now and then you have a poster that's this way. So we actually get to see a lot more of it. But what I'm trying to tell you is there's some consistency here. There's always a certain area cut out for the image. And what I found on this website is that that area that works the best is maximum of 600 pixels tall by a maximum of 800 pixels wide. So if it's something that's taller than wide, then it's going to maximize the 600 pixels tall and be something less than 800 pixels wide. If it's something that's very wide, then it's going to be 800 pixels wide by 600 or less pixels tall. So keep that in mind as we go through the instructions and they'll hopefully make more sense to you. So. Also, everything that I'm going to show you here, you could use for your own purposes later. Like, for example, you may want to enter a design contest in which they'll tell you to send them, and this is just an example, a TIFF that is 7 inches on the largest side that is 300 pixels per inch. And if you follow these same steps and just change out, what we're doing specifically here, you would be able to accomplish any of those formats. Or if you want to send um, an image of your latest work that you did in Illustrator to your grandma who doesn't have Illustrator, then you could certainly make a JPEG and you could make it as close to say five by four inches so that it shows up nicely on the email. Okay, so enough said about the whys. Let's get into the hows. All right, so what we're doing is maximizing out an 800 pixel wide area by 600 pixels tall. We're not filling it. It would be very rare that we would exactly fill it perfect, but we're using as much of it as possible without cropping your work. Now, don't start this step until you have completed your Illustrator file. So if I'm asking you to turn in an Illustrator file, I covered that in the last video. You would have made a backup copy for yourself and then you would have saved a copy to turn in to me. So what I would suggest you do is make sure that you have saved that Illustrator file that you're turning in to me. Just go in, save it one last time, look in the folder, make sure it's there. Then right next to that folder that you created to turn your work into me, let's make another temporary folder called Delete Soon. So the assumption is here on your desktop, you have this folder called Turn It Into Steve. You have a copy of the Illustrator file all ready to go to be turned in. Now let's make a file to hold this temporary Illustrator file that we're going to make in a, as our progress to making the JPEG file. So I'll call this delete soon. And then what I'm going to do is open this one back up 
and now I'm going to do file, save as, and I'm going to navigate to the delete soon folder. And that was on my desktop. And again, if I change them by date modified, there's my delete soon. And I'm just going to save a copy of this in here, and I may even add uh, export or something to the end of this so I know why I had that file. So the reason for that last little step here is that we don't mess up what we want to turn into me. So I'm working clearly on a different folder and a different file here. So first thing I can do is get rid of what I don't need here. All I want left is just the original piece. So I'm deleting artworks, to, uh, art, artwork, art boards that are unneeded. I'm back to what I just simply need here. Okay, so we just knocked out this step and this step. And now we are going to create an art board that is the exact size we need. So in our case here, we're going to make a new art board that is 800 by 600 pixels tall. First step to, to make your life easier since we're going to be working in uh, pixels is let's get the units changed to pixels. So we'll do Command R to turn on the rulers, right click inside the ruler and change the unit to pixels. So Command R turns on the rulers, find a little bit of real estate here in the ruler, put your cursor there and then right click, change the unit to pixels. Now go to the artboard tool and stay away from this artboard. So get a good distance away from it and click and drag and start drawing out an artboard. And because you change the units to pixels, you'll see right to the, the bottom right of it, it starts to give you the, the units in pixels that you're drawing. Now if you try to go exactly 800 by 600 here, it'll drive you batty. So just get a little bit over. Like I'm way up at 900 by 6 something. That's close enough for now. I'll release the mouse. I now have this artboard. The artboard is still selected. Now I'll go up to the top here in the width and the height column, making sure that this lock is broken, and I'll dial in the exact numbers that I need manually. So I'm typing in 800 over here. I'm going to type in 600. Just hit Enter, the Tab key, to make that go. And once again, I can verify I'm at 800 pixels. Lock is broken by 600 pixels tall. Okay, now we want to get a handle on exactly what size our work is. And we'll do that by creating an odd colored rectangle over our original artboard. So what happens a lot of times is our artwork includes things that go out of the bounds like this. So we don't want to include all the way out to here. We want to get what is just our perfect work. You know, in other words, what we cropped uh, when we printed it. So let's um, make sure that we're up on the highest layer here and then we'll create an oddball color, something that'll really stick out here. And then we want to make sure that we have our smart guides on if they're not, we'll go up to View and then just click here to place the check mark there. Since I already had one, I don't need to do that. And I'm going to go right over from this corner, click and drag to this corner. So this magenta box here now represents the overall size of my work. And we want to select everything on our original artboard, including this new odd colored rectangle and then option drag it onto the new artboard. So before we can do that, we need to make sure that no layers are locked. If they were, we just simply go to this drop down here and unlock all layers. Look for any sub items that might be locked. In that case, we can go to object. And if unlock all were available, not grayed out, we could select that. But in our case, we know that being grayed out, there's no sub items locked. We select everything here. We click and drag, but we also hold down the option key so that we're making a copy. 
Now we want to resize the work to maximize the 800 by 600 pixel area. Be careful with the shift key. Always hold it down until after you finish scaling. The last thing you want to do is stretch or squish your work. So I'm going to put my cursor up near the corner here. Hold down the shift key and then just start resizing my work until I maximize this area. So in other words, I want that magenta box to touch either the sides or the top and the bottom. And since in this particular case, it's much taller than it is wide, then it's gonna touch the top and the bottom. But notice it's the magenta box that I'm concerned about, not the tips of the red or the, the tips of the yellow that happen to be sticking out here. And then the closer I get to having this right, then I want to zoom in, but I should have the selection made before I do that. And I just keep on zooming in and getting this right up as close to the top and the bottom in this case as I can. Sometimes it helps to turn off the snapping so we can go to view and uncheck snap the point there. And that looks like that's giving us a little more freedom. Okay, so we are looking pretty good there. Now, just so you can see the difference, let me go to one that's wider than it is tall. And so you can see the process is exactly the same, but because it's so wide, we're gonna end up maximizing the left and right rather than the top and the bottom something like that. Now, after you maximize the artboard, you will either have to change the width or the height, but never both. So let me emphasize with an example here what I mean by that. Let's go back to this one. Now, there is absolutely no need for me to change the height, not even in the uh, like cleanup mode, if I realize, oh, maybe I have a little bit of white showing there. In that case, I would command Z several times until I get back here and zoom in and make sure that I don't have any white showing, which you know might mean having to make it just a little bit bigger. So I want to be very careful at this stage and make sure that I've either maximized just barely touching the top and the bottom or just barely touching the left side the right side. Then once I've done that, now I go to my artboard tool, click on it, make sure I'm on the right artboard, and then I want to make this so that it is the exact size of that rectangle that I created. And if I go up here and I look, I can see that I did not touch the height, so it's still exactly 600, and then my width is something less than 800. What exactly it is doesn't matter. That'll vary from piece to piece. Now let's look over at this example of one that is wider than it is tall. Um, in this case, we do not touch the width. We make sure that the width is good, that there's no white showing, and we just change the height. So when we look over here, we have a width that's exactly 800 by a height that's something less than 600. Okay, now we want to verify that we have a digital bleed if needed. So what the heck does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Now, anything that goes to the edge of the artwork, which would mean a full bleed project, can and should go further, right? We don't want to take a chance that we're right on the edge. And I'll show you later, probably in the next video, what can happen. So we want to make sure that everything 
that should go right to the edge of the artboard goes 